Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rhythm Off The Cuff. Today we have a cool review for you from the brand Albany Watches. Now they are actually a new micro brand out of Cape Town, South Africa. And essentially they were named after uh, the founder's father, uh, whaling adventure stories uh, from Albany, Australia. And uh, really they focus on these really cool vintage retro style divers and I really really like what they're offering here and kind of their uh, initial outing. This is more of a preview than a review because of course this is actually a pre-production prototype I'm showing you guys. Uh, I gotta say aesthetically very very impressed off the bat and then of course um, build quality wise this thing definitely stands up against its contemporaries. Now this type of watch is of course a dive watch, some key common characteristics and design language when you're looking for a dive watch you're gonna want something that of course has water resistance. Typically through some type of screw down crown you're gonna want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelet. Now this is known as the AMA diver or AMA diver depending on how you read it but basically this was inspired by the ama divers uh, and and which are known as the pearl divers of japan they're all female uh, basically they would free dive for up to 30 meters uh, underwater to hunt for pearls they hold their breath for up to two minutes and then they let out a very distinctive whistle when they would surface uh, you know known as the call of the sea now this 2000 year old tradition is passed down from mother to daughter within the a uh, the ama women uh, the ama women divers uh, and essentially they will do that between the ages of 12 all the way up to over 80 years old uh, and it's possibly the world's oldest form of free diving so really cool kind of backstory behind it you know it's it's a there's a true inspiration there which you can feel in the design language and the execution so I can definitely appreciate that uh, so with all that said let's actually go ahead pull the camera out and get this piece in hand and take a closer all look. right guys uh, so Probably before we get in any further, I do want to talk about the fact that, of course, this is a pre-production prototype, so there will be some changes, and I really just kind of to get those out of the way as you guys kind of gaze upon the current trim. Uh, some things that will be changed is they actually will be enlarging the 12 o'clock loom pip as well as just upgrading the loom all the way around, and they actually might even possibly uh, enlarge these dial indices slightly. So, of course, one of the nice things about an enthusiast-run brand is that, you know, they're they're watch geeks and they love their loom, right? So I think that's a really nice touch. Uh, but one thing also I do want to mention while I have you here is this comprehensive uh, packaging, which I think is really nice. You can see lovely bamboo box. Uh, so obviously that's something that's a bit better for the environment considering how quickly bamboo uh, can grow. And then you get into this really nice canvas uh, watch roll inside so it's I love when uh, brands will offer you something that's useful uh, so as you can see here really nice it actually has this nice uh, kind of teal green suede interior you can see what the NATO strap looks like as well as this really beautifully done leather strap it's nicely signed there on the buckle if I can get it to focus of course there you go so nice logo there and then really well done from that aspect. Quite handsome, genuine leather, of course. So really nice and this is something that you can use to travel or something you can use for storage purposes. I just, I can appreciate the fact that this is something that is, is absolutely usable and not just for, uh, you know, just for looks and, and kind of uh, a very quick you know, use, one-time use kind of deal. Uh, this is something that you can actually get some use out of and, you know, it's a nice tidy package. So I can appreciate the uh, them kind of pulling out all the stops, but let's actually get into this timepiece, which is, uh, you know, I got to say, pretty darn impressive. So these are planning to go eventually to full price of uh, 425 uh, and that's within USD, but they're gonna start at 299 on NATO via Kickstarter, of course, and then there'll be upgrades and whatnot, and, and uh, you know how the Kickstarter game is, there, that pretty much keeps happening depending on how much funding they get. Um, and then there's other choices as well, other packages, so you can, of course, you guys saw the Italian leather, um, and then there's, of course, uh, this wonderful beads of 
rice style bracelet, which I really, really like. Now, one of the things that's great about here is this diameter. Um, it's actually 40 millimeter. It's a 40 millimeter case, uh, but the bezel itself is slightly larger at 41.5. So it does have a bit more oomph. You could say for your typical uh, 40 millimeter watch uh, it is 12.8 uh, millimeters thick here it's 48 millimeters lug to lug and of course it's all uh, stainless steel a uh, mixture of brushed and polished finishes from that aspect uh, the crystal is of course a sapphire it's a single dome with an inner ar coating there so it does really nice um, and it actually is quite uh, legible and readable there, even at the very harsh angles. So that's actually pretty surprising for a single dome. So very nice from that aspect, of course, as well. Uh, this bezel is actually really nice. Check this out. Ooh. 120 click. Very tactile, very grippy and clicky still quite smooth even with you know with these gloves on it's it's a very very dialed in uh bezel i'd probably compare it something similar to like an oris aquas not quite as sharp feeling i'd say in the clickiness um because it has a little bit of added smoothness so uh, not necessarily a bad thing that it isn't exactly like the uh oris uh, bezel action now the crown is screwed down of course and signed the movement inside although you can't see it is actually a miota uh, 9039 which is the no date specific so there's not going to be a ghost um, setting or anything like that you can see here there's a famous portrait um, of the ama divers there uh, you know so if your kids are watching, maybe they should look away quickly. Uh, so quite an artistic rendition, but this is actually quite a famous photo as well. So um, I think, you know, obviously it adds a little bit of history to it. Uh, very nicely done from that standpoint. It is just lightly etched. Uh, it's not like a deep stamping or anything like that, but it's a little bit of artwork um, for a watch that I think has a very unique theme. Um, and and a really interesting execution. I love the kind of the blend of old and new. This definitely feels like a modern watch, but it does have a lot of aesthetics that tie back to kind of that vintage uh, 60s, 70s style. Um, and then the color layout, it, although it's quite fun and retro, it does feel all you know quite modern at the same time. So this dial is particularly known as the Bathy's Blue Dial, uh, which is a Fume dial. It has printed indices, uh, Super Luminova BGW9, and is water resistant up to 300 meters. Like I mentioned before, no date movement, so it's a no date dial. Uh, this bracelet is 20 millimeters. It's non-tapering, but it's a really nice little beads of rice. Of course, if you've ever worn a beads of rice bracelet, you know just how uh, just how well articulated these are, right? And how comfortable this is. They're rather short. I mean, these basic links are similar to a half size link on another type of watch. So uh, one thing also to note is we do have the drilled lugs, which uh, does help for strap changes. And you know, with this more straight uh, open their lug, it definitely uh, aids in making this watch look much nicer on straps than your typical watch cases. Of course, it does make it a little bit more complex when uh, creating an end link and a bracelet to flow with the case, but it's a nice trade off and you know, I don't mind it at all because uh, you know, it all kind of just comes together. So with that 20 millimeter lug width, of course, you do get, uh, you know, this thing is pretty much a strap monster. Uh, and then when you look at out of the box, what it comes with, everything is solid, milled nicely, little flip lock action there. Nothing special, but at the same time, it works, right? It's not something where you are, you know, they're just doing anything to check the box. Uh, they're choosing functional parts here and I think it works really well. Even with the non-tapering uh, bracelets, it still flows really quite nicely. So with that said, actually, you know what guys, let's go ahead and get this piece on wrist and uh, see how it wears. Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this thing wears really well. I think it does add a little bit of presence because of that non-tapering bracelet. Also the dial real estate, when you look at those kind of bezel 
to dial proportions. Also, you see the dial has all of the indices pushed all the way out. So this would look a lot smaller if they put the indices closer to the center, maybe added a rehot at an angle or a chaptering or something like that, or added just more space on that bezel insert. But in the current uh, kind of proportions, I think it still looks really good. I think the nice thing about it is that you actually get quite a bit more wrist presence than you would from your typical kind of vintage style 40 millimeter diver. So for me, that's a good thing. This is something where somebody who likes a bigger watch would really actually enjoy a smaller watch. So uh, because it does still have that visual pop uh, without necessarily having the visual, I'm sorry, the uh, physical dimensions to require the pop. So so it definitely adds a little bit more weight visually there without actually having the physical weight. And you can see this thing just drapes and wraps right around the wrist like you'd expect from any fully milled, high quality uh, you know, beads of rice bracelet. Of course, uh, this actually does, let me just make sure, yep, it has screw links in case you were wondering and you didn't notice. Uh, and this thing looks good, guys. I gotta say, it's it's a good looking watch. I really like the color play on here, Those these aspects of the blue with the teals and the white and the black. It's just really, really well done. I also like uh, the tactile feeling of dealing with this bezel and interacting with it as well as the crown. Um, so really nice touch points, feels very high quality, and honestly kind of gives you a bit of a dock uh, slash meets Seiko type vibe and uh, you know obviously during that period that time period in the 70s those are very popular dive watches so I think uh, what they do here is without being uh, feeling anything like any type of homage watch they've really been able to kind of hit that sweet spot where there are very clear inspirations but it's also very clearly its own thing at the same time so with that said actually let's set up some low light transition and loom shots and move into my closing thoughts okay let's go ahead and hit the lights here as you can see that bgw9 loom is very nice uh, you even can see a little peek there that surprise the uh, the crown is actually loomed as well so that's pretty cool um, you know you guys can notice of course it'd be nice to have a little bit more surface area for the loom uh, they are going to improve the application but they also are you know planning to uh, consider actually increasing the size as well of those indices which I think will also really help of course now one of the things I like to do within these loom shots is get some little light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field a lot of times you're going to be coming in and out of buildings transitioning in and out of vehicles or maybe just walking through the shade in less than optimal lighting conditions which my hot studio lights do a really great job of simulating uh, being maybe out <laughs> outdoors in the middle of a park but uh, here you're going to get a chance to look at it under some harsher lighting conditions really high contrast uh, because it's the nice thing is of course you can see how the colors render and some of those textures and how they appear but you can also look at the fineness in the brushing and the polishing as the light glides across the case and bracelet links the way the light plays with that uh, really beautifully done sapphire crystal of course the sapphire bezel insert also plays well off of the light there and you can see that it's actually quite legible even in very low and transitional lighting it's not like in between light you're not going to be able to tell uh, e even with partial lighting with partial loom and kind of everything in between it actually is quite good looking still very much readable from that aspect all right guys so closing thoughts on the wrist very classic proportions really great vintage retro aesthetic that I think reads as that kind of vintage retro style uh, that's so popular right now. As far as model variants go, uh, there's of course this plus a black pearl uh, model which is uh, actually a mother of pearl dial or a mop dial as you might know. Um, and then there's also the abyss black which is just a plain black dial uh, without the fume. So really nice options from that aspect i think this one for me is a great sweet spot between the two uh, of course if you're a little bit more sedate you want something a little bit more classic and monochrome you can definitely always go with the plain black dial 
or if you want a real crazy punch um, and you want something really fun that just screams summer, then you can also get the mop dial. Um, and it's a black pearl mop, so it, it's really nice. Still feels quite masculine. It's not something where, it, you know, uh, like a female looking uh, mop dial or anything like that. Um, and then there's this guy here, which I think is just a great, fun, uh, summery vibe that really keys into that kind of modern aesthetic with just the color play and the execution there. So really big fan of this particular trim. Now, as far as comparable models go, of course, there are a lot of vintage inspired big crowns out there from Tudor to Oris to Zodiac. But this one, um, it really chooses to take a bit more of like a Doxa meets Seiko aesthetic that helps it stand out. You know, it's not just your basic kind of 50 fathoms look or uh, vintage Rolex Submariner big crown look. They definitely are taking inspirations that are not quite the mid-century early divers, but more of kind of like the heyday of diving, you know, in the 70s when, uh, you know, recreational diving was, was really booming and just so many brands were just coming and going and trying new things and really adding some really fun aesthetics that I think carry over really well within of obviously today's ranges um, and then you know from Albany watches now really joining the fray with this particular Ama diver uh, I'd say the bottom line is this is definitely a handsome and capable sports watch offering a ton of style and value guys so it looks good uh, functionally it works obviously and um, it's a nice one. I mean, 300 meters of water resistance is nothing to scoff at. So I think uh, the combination of specs, aesthetic, execution, the fact that there's passion behind the brand and the story, uh, you know, that's something that I definitely can appreciate. But do let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.